The WWE roster is stacked, with over 200 wrestlers currently on it. Some are among the greatest wrestlers of all time, while others, not so much. We went through and ranked every member of the WWE roster, looking at their in-ring skills, characters, and how they've been presented on TV. We'll start at the bottom and work our way up. So who's the worst WWE wrestler right now? It's number 166, Boa. This Chinese wrestler was signed back in 2016, but didn't have his first televised WWE match until 2019. Counting that, Boa's only wrestled 17 matches and hasn't been seen since January 2022. That's partially why I'm putting Boa at the bottom of the list. The other reason is that even though he's been in WWE for six years, he hasn't improved a ton and doesn't really have anything that makes him stand out. Maybe Boa will make a comeback and turn things around in 2023, but he's just not there right now. 165, Dante Chen. I feel bad for this guy. First I said he had the worst WWE fit in 2022, and now I'm ranking him as the second worst wrestler on the roster. I think he's solid, and given some more time, I can see him getting somewhere, but for right now, he's been mainly an enhancement talent, and hasn't been given many opportunities to make a name for himself. Also, he really needs to change his finisher. Number 164, Javier Bernal. Javier made his WWE debut in 2022. However, the career of Big Body Javi has been a big, big disappointment so far. He's bland and uninteresting, and has lost the majority of his matches. The most notable moment of his run so far might be like on his head during Tyler Bates Tiger Driver. He's still new though, so there's hope that Javier Bernal will turn things around in due time. Number 163, Bryson Montana. 10 in-ring matches since July of 2022 with only one win. That's the career so far of Bryson Montana. Right now, he's pretty bland and WWE doesn't seem to have any plans for him in the near future. He'll likely spend most of 2023 losing to more established talent. But with less than a year of experience in the ring, there's still plenty of time for Montana to find an interesting character and develop better in-ring skills. Number 162, Hank Walker. The only reason Mr. Walker ranks above Bernal is because he did beat him on NXT 2.0's one year anniversary show. Other than that, the guy hasn't had a ton of matches and tends to come up on a losing end. But a recent pairing with Drew Gulak and a feud with Charlie Dempsey means the company does see something in him. Otherwise, the story of Walker being a security guard is kind of interesting, but his career is still too young to rank him any higher. Number 161, Tavian Heights. With only two televised matches in his career so far, it's just far too early to tell how Tavian Height's career will pan out. He has a unique look, quite a bit of power, and most importantly, he's a former Olympian who competed in the 2020 Tokyo Games in men's Greco-Roman wrestling. With that kind of pedigree, he could turn out to be a star someday, but for now, we'll just have to wait and see. Number 160, Miles Bourne. At this point in time, it's pretty tough to rank Miles Bourne. He debuted in NXT in June of 2022, but he's so far wrestled less than 20 televised matches, most of those he ended up losing but he does have a good look and has some impressive strength for his size. He also has an interesting story as he has persistent pulmonary hypertension which has left him deaf. Earlier in Miles' life, it also caused his body to flatline twice within five minutes on a flight to the hospital. It's an incredibly inspiring story for sure, but without any major storylines or feuds so far, it's hard to rank Bourne much higher at this point in time. Number 159, Zion Quinn. WWE doesn't seem to have a clear direction for Mr. Quinn. The former professional rugby player has been stuck in the mid to lower card and hasn't won any significant matches. I don't think his look is awful, but he doesn't stand out either, and his in-ring work doesn't quite stand out as main roster ready yet. Maybe there's a role for Zion Quinn somewhere, but they haven't found it yet. Number 158, Electra Lopez. While she wasn't the most experienced, Electra Lopez fit nicely as the female muscle for Lungado del Fantasma. However, the group has been moved to the main roster, and Lopez is left by herself in NXT after being replaced by Zelina Vega. She seems to be sailing without direction right now, and on top of that, Electra isn't all that great in the ring. Maybe she has a big bright future ahead of her, but I'm not holding my breath. Number 157, Aaliyah James. James is another wrestler that's hard to rank. She only wrestled one match in 2022 and hasn't competed in 2023 yet. She does have more experience than some of the other wrestlers we've talked about so far, but her career is still really young. Normally I would say we'll see what the future holds, but WWE needs to bring Aaliyah James back in order for her to have a future. Number 156, Amari Miller. Amari is another young wrestler who has some experience but still needs to develop. She's got a fun personality, but has mainly been relegated to shows like 205 Live and Level Up. When Amari does get a match at NXT, she always loses. Miller has potential, but needs some more time and to be given a chance. Number 155, Tank Ledger. A former college football player, Tank Ledger came into WWE through their NIL program where they sign college athletes while they're still in school. Sure, he has a unique look and name, but so far that hasn't translated to success in the ring as he only picked up one televised victory, which was in a tag team match on Level Up. Still, Tank has size, strength, and surprising speed for a big man that could someday make him a superstar. While his career is young, he's still one to keep an eye on. Number 154, Sol Ruka. Debuting in 2022, Sol Ruka 
hasn't made much of an impact. It does make sense considering the former gymnast had no wrestling experience before WWE. She's mainly just been used as an enhancement talent on NXT and Level Up. She did briefly go viral though in late 2022 when she dished out an incredible flipping cutter on Valentina Forez, which Triple H even retweeted. If she can continue hitting awesome moves like that, there could be a bright future for her. And like others listed so far, Sol Ruka is still young, so there's plenty of time for her character to develop and match her athleticism. Number 153, Ariana Grace. Ariana Grace, the daughter of former Intercontinental Champion Santina Morella, certainly has the pedigree and talent to someday become a star. She made her debut in March 2022 and quickly became a featured performer in NXT, picking up some early wins on TV. Unfortunately, her year ended on a down note after undergoing surgery. Still, WWE seems to have plans for her, so it's likely she could climb this list when she's healthy again. Number 152, Daba Kato. Formerly known as Commander Aziz, you'd think that a wrestler with the size and look of Daba Kato would be a big star in WWE, but you'd be wrong. Kato is struggled to establish himself, partially due to his awkward debut as part of Raw Underground. As Commander Aziz, he was just Apollo Crews' bodyguard, and while that's a fine role, it didn't do much for Aziz's career. To make matters worse, Daba Kato wasn't seen for the majority of 2022. He recently returned to NXT Vengeance Day, so we'll see how it goes. Number 151, Shanky. Here's another big man WWE just hasn't done much with. He's appeared sporadically throughout his WWE career and hasn't wrestled since July 2022, when Triple H took over creative. Not to mention the fact that the last time Shanky won a match on TV was in September 2021. I don't hate the goofy dancing character WWE gave Shanky, but they didn't seem to do much with it. While I don't see Shanky as a main event star, I think he could be a fun comedic character if given more time. Number 150, Stevie Turner. Sort of like Daba Kato, Stevie Turner is another wrestler who's just come back from a long break. She had exclusively competed on NXT UK since 2021, and when that show went on hiatus, so did Stevie Turner. She's recently come back, now with a streamer slash social media character. It's a good idea, so I'm interested to see where it goes. Stevie Turner herself is solid in the ring, and now that she's back on TV, it's not hard to see her rising the ranks of the WWE roster. Number 149, Guru Raj. This Indian star, who was trained by the great Kali, made his WWE debut against Finn Balor. While he didn't win, Raj looked good, but like a lot of WWE's development wrestlers, he's made sporadic appearances on TV and is often used to give other stars a win. His speed is one of his best attributes, but he's gonna need more than that to stand out on the roster. Number 148, Ikiman Jiro. Jiro is definitely a talented wrestler, but has fallen into the rut of basically just wrestling on Level Up and shows like that. The real downfall for Ikiman was when Kushida left WWE in April 2022 and ended their tag team, Jacket Time. Since then, Ikiman Jiro has basically just been losing matches without any storyline support, which makes it hard to get behind him and rank him any higher. Number 147, Sangha. Sangha has aligned himself with several different people. First, he was Grayson Waller's muscle. After that, he became a confidant for Yulisa Leon and Valentina Lopez. Now he's back with his former tag team partner, Veer Mahan, in NXT. The 6'8 Sangha seems like someone who would have been sent straight to the main roster, but the fact that he has it is probably a good thing. He hasn't wrestled a ton of televised matches, and with some more experience, I think he could be a solid powerhouse monster. Number 146, Odyssey Jones. After being injured at the beginning of the year, Odyssey Jones made his return in October 2022. He's been dominant since coming back, so it seems like WWE has plans for him. He received a match on main event with a win over Akira Tozawa, so WWE might be testing the waters for a main roster run. I hope they find a role for him, as Jones has something, but it might take a bit of time to discover it. I am putting Odyssey Jones pretty low on this list, but I am hopeful that he'll rise up and come into his own. Number 145, Thea Hale. I'm pretty sure Hale is the youngest person on the WWE roster at only 19 years old. She basically graduated high school and then became a WWE wrestler. Because she's so young, Hale still has a lot of time to grow. Her matches are by no means flawless, but she has a lot of potential. Thea Hale sort of fell into the enhancement talent role, but has started winning matches more regularly. No one knows for sure, but I think it's possible we'll see Thea Hale on the main roster in the next couple of years. Number 144, Valentina Perez and Ulysses Leon. I'm putting these two together since they are a tag team, and I feel like they rank similar. Perez and Leon have shown that they have tremendous chemistry together, as seen in the Fatal 4-Way Elimination match for the NXT Women's Tag Team titles in August 2022. Unfortunately, Leon got sidelined with a knee injury after the match, and likely won't return until well into 2023. Valentina hasn't done much since then either, and has been losing the majority of her singles matches. Hopefully once Ulysses Leon returns, these two ladies can get things back on track. Number 143, Quincy Elliott. You can tell WWE likes Quincy Elliott's personality as they gave him the opportunity to co-host Halloween Havoc. In the ring, the Super Diva has only had 10 televised matches so far, but they've shown impressive athleticism for their size. However, they suffered an injury and haven't been back on TV since October, but if they pick up right where they left off, then 2023 could be a breakout year for Elliott. Number 142, Lyra Valkyria. Lyra is a talented wrestler and was presented very strongly in NXT UK, but after not having wrestled since August of 2021, she returned to a 
WWE ring in December 2022. She made a statement by not only having a unique entrance, but also by winning her first two single matches in dominant fashion. With her talent and presentation, it's not hard to envision her becoming NXT Women's Champion before long. Number 141, Valhalla. After a roughly two year absence, Logan returned at the 2022 Royal Rumble and is now back full time as of November 2022. Now under the name Valhalla, she has a new look and is working alongside her real life husband Eric as part of the Viking Raiders. She hasn't been back for too long, which is why I'm putting Valhalla low on this list. We have to wait and see what happens, but I'm not over the moon to see Sarah Logan back in WWE. I'm just not confident this new character and alliance with Viking Raiders is going to work out. Plus, the company hasn't given her a match since she's been back, but who knows, maybe I'll be totally wrong. Number 140, Tamina. Tamina and Natalia made a formidable team in 2021, but since splitting up, Tamina was mostly chasing the 24-7 championship. There were some funny moments Tamina was a part of, but outside Outside of that, she just seems to be another person on the roster. The second generation star hasn't been part of any major storylines or rivalries and only won two matches in 2022. Which means, unfortunately, this might be as high of a ranking she'll get in her career at this point. Number 139, Lash Legend. 2022 started off well for Lash Legend. She was doing her own talk show and at the same time she managed to pick up a number of wins. Neither the talk show or the win streak lasted however, nor did Lash's temporary alliance with the tag team pretty deadly. These days, she usually ends up losing her matches, but if the former WNBA player can improve her in-ring ability and receive a consistent push, I think Lash has the potential to truly become a legend. Number 138, Tatum Paxley. Similar to others we've talked about, Paxley is brand new to wrestling, having her first match in February 2022. She had a solid first year, and really the main thing holding her back is experience. To date, she still barely had over 20 televised matches, but WWE putting her in the Diamond Mind stable means they must see something in her. Give Tatum a few more years, and she can easily rise up the ranks of the women's roster. Number 137, Kiana James. Like Tatum Paxi, Kiana James made her WWE debut the same year. Since then, James has made great strides in terms of character and in ring work and is already technically wrestling on the main roster. She even scored a win over Dana Brooke. This seems to suggest that WWE is looking to have Kiana make the transition from NXT to Raw or SmackDown. In the meantime, it's also possible James and her secretary Giovanna will capture tag team gold in NXT. We'll see what happens in 2023, but so far, things are looking promising for Kiana James. Number 136, Blair Davenport. Blair is featured in some high stakes matches in 2022, including a Japanese street fight against Mako Satomura for the NXT UK Women's title. Additionally, she competed in the NXT Women's Championship unification match involving both Satomura and Mandy Rose. While she didn't win either one, she was most certainly impressive. She's been off TV due to some visa issues, but when those are cleared up, she's likely to return to a prominent role again. Number 135, Isla Dawn. While never a champion on NXT UK, Isla has been part of the brand since the beginning. In April 2022, Dawn had her World of Darkness match against Mako Satomura for the Women's Championship. While she didn't win, the match and all her promos in the build-up helped elevate her. On her arrival in NXT, she set her sights on Alba Fire and made a statement by costing her the women's title and then beating her at Deadline. But now it looks like the two have joined forces, which could be a lot of fun. It's still early in Isla's run in NXT, but it'll be interesting to see where her career goes. Number 134, Dana Brooke. Brooke's 2022 mostly involved her holding the 24-7 championship for much of the year. Normally, being a champion would be a good thing, but it's the 24-7 title. I actually have a soft spot for the belt, but it had long overstay its welcome, and someone can only go so far when they're considered part of the 24-7 division. Now that the title has been retired, I feel that like Dana is falling into the Tamina Snuka role as just another person on the roster. Prove me wrong, WWE. Number 133, Channing Stakes Lorenzo and Tony D'Angelo. Like with Valentina Perez and Elisa Leon, I'm putting Lorez and D'Angelo together for similar reasons. However, between them, I definitely think Tony D'Angelo has more potential. The dawn of NXT had been putting in some strong character work before it all abruptly ended due to an injury, but he did return in mid-December to pick back up where he left off. During that time, Channing Stakes Lorenzo focused on singles action, and while he's not bad, he's just alright. Maybe with time, Lorenzo can improve, but again, I I think Tony is who we'll be seeing more of. With that said, D'Angelo and Stack's feud with Ungato Del Fantasma was one of the highlights of NXT in 2022. Number 132, Damon Kemp. While he is still relatively new, Kemp has been quite impressive recently. He also has an impressive background as a freestyle and Greco-Roman college athlete. In the ring, his ambulance match at Halloween Havoc against Julius Creed was great, and he cut some good promos in the lead up to it. Overall, Kemp's feud with Creed helped him a ton, and he's starting 2023 with a lot of momentum. Number 131, Trick Williams. 
Since debuting in 2021, Trick Williams has been paired with Carmelo Hayes. While Hayes is definitely the bigger star, Trick has been an invaluable part of Carmelo's rise in NXT. Williams has enhanced each segment and match that Carmelo's been in with his quips, clever puns, and facial expressions. While Trick Williams might be kind of a sidekick, he's absolutely nailed that role. Number 130, Duke Hudson. Duke Hudson is another wrestler still finding his way. He started with a poker player character, then in 2022, he served as Persia Parada's on-screen boyfriend, but more recently, he's been enrolled as the newest member of Chase U. It seems like he's gained some direction now and is on the right path. Hudson has got talent and is entertaining in his new role, so I'm optimistic about where he is headed. Number 129, Brooks Jensen and Josh Briggs. This tag team made waves in 2022 when they captured the NXT UK tag team titles. Since losing the gold, however, they haven't done much. Both Jensen and Briggs are fine athletes and with some more experience could become a top tier tag team. However, at the moment, their characters are a bit bland and leave something to be desired. Though currently, Brooks is only 21, so he especially has plenty of time left to develop. Number 128, Von Wagner. WWE definitely seems interested in Wagner. He got a push in 2022, competing for both the North American Championship and also the NXT Championship. While he didn't win either, the man has improved significantly from where he started in 2021. He's also received a few main roster matches on main event, which means management still has their eyes on him. While he's yet to move to the next level in his career, Von Wagner is still very much a work in progress, so we'll see where he goes. Number 127, Tiffany Stratton. It's clear that Tiffany Stratton is a fast learner when it comes to her in-ring work. She continues to make big improvements since her debut in late 2021. Stratton's lights out match against Wendy Chu in August 2022 is her best to date and really the only thing holding her back is inexperience since she hadn't wrestled before WWE. She wasn't on TV for the last part of 2022 but returned in January at New Year's Evil, being unveiled as the one behind the countdown clock. The announcers treated her like a major star which is an encouraging sign. With more time, Tiffany Stratton will only continue to shine brighter and brighter. Number 126, Oro Mensa. Formerly known as Oliver Carter, Mensa found success in NXT UK as the tag team champion with Ashton Smith. He joined the non-UK NXT in 2022 and has been impressive in a short amount of time. This was put on display in the five-man North American title ladder match at Halloween Havoc. The future is uncertain, but I think Oro Manson is sitting in a great position. Number 125, Idris Inoufi and Malik Blade. Another tag team, and what a team these two are. It's safe to say that Idris and Malik Blade are both workhorses in NXT. They have wrestled 20 matches and counting together, and even though they've lost more times than they've won, Inoufi and Blade have continuously competed at a high level, while their chemistry together is top notch. This is on full display during the triple threat number one contenders match against Brooks Jensen and the Dyad. They then followed this up with a strong showing against the tag champions pretty deadly two weeks later. I'm not sure what WWE has planned for them, but I feel like a tag team championship reign is in Idris and Malik's futures. Number 124, Ava Rain. Joining Schism late in 2022, Ava Rain made a statement upon her debut. She has a lot going for her. She's athletic, she's 5'10", and most importantly, she's The Rock's daughter. It's it's almost a sure thing she'll be on the main roster someday, but right now, it's too early to tell how good she'll be as she's yet to compete in the ring. Still, she's one of the most prized prospects in NXT, but at 21 years old and with incredible genetics, she has plenty of time to make her own name in WWE. Number 123, Wendy Chu. Why don't more people talk about Wendy Chu? Her gimmick as a sleepy millennial with a onesie and pillow is awesome. It's different and has gotten a great response so far, not to mention her lo-fi entrance music is a joy to listen to. Chu has also shown she can put in the work in as well, as seen during her matches against Tiffany Stratton. So many people are sleeping on this wrestler, pun intended. Number 122, Charlie Dempsey. You might not recognize it, but Dempsey is actually the son of William Regal. Charlie has inherited the Smash Mouth technical style of his father and had a solid 2022. In NXT UK, he was presented well, and that has continued now that he's part of the black and gold brand. His appearances have been sporadic so far, but hopefully he can find his footing soon. Dempsey has bags of potential, and with an incredible trainer for a father, he'll only get better as time goes on. Number 121, the Maximum Male Models. Like some of the other tag teams, I'm just lumping Masse and Mansoir together. The Maximum Male Models haven't really gotten off the ground. I like the gimmick, and more recently, the group has gotten really comfortable with their characters. With that said, I don't really see a bright future for them. They still haven't won a match since the group formed, and a lot of the entertaining stuff they're doing isn't actually happening on TV. It is always possible that things turn around, but as of right now, Masse and Mansoir are where they're at. Number 120, Joe Gacy. Despite receiving a 
push, Gacy's dark cult-like gimmick that somehow promotes inclusivity just hasn't resonated as of yet. However, he worked a singles match with Kofi Kingston and received a match at main event near the end of the year, so the creative team may be testing the waters for a run on the main roster. As the leader of Schism, he's likely to get the most TV time if he's called up to the main roster, but with fellow cult leader Bray Wyatt back on SmackDown, it might be tough for the company to find a place that makes sense for Gacy. Number 119, Akira Tozawa. Tozawa is really fascinating. For the past two years, he's been mainly involved in the 24-7 title picture and has been a comedy character. For most wrestlers, this means death for their careers, but Tozawa plays his role so well, it's hard not to like him. He and guys like R-Truth really help make the 24-7 title something worth watching. It can be a bit frustrating to see Akira play the goofball, since he is honestly a really good wrestler, especially if you've seen him outside of WWE. I do like his comedic role though, but at the same time, he's been mainly used as an enhancement talent, so I can only rank Tozawa up so high. Number 118, Fallon Henley. Fallon Henley made strides in 2022, managing Josh Briggs and Brooke Jensen to the NXT UK Tag Team Championship, but she's also seen some success in the ring as well, team up with her former rival, Kiana James. After defeating Ivy Neal and Tana Paxi, the duo have set themselves up for a shot at the tag titles. The team likely won't last long, which should give Henley a chance to shine on her own. Number 117, Zoe Stark. After missing several months due to injury, Stark returned in epic fashion by winning a battle royal in July 2022 to become number one contender for the NXT Women's Championship. Despite coming up short in that championship match, as well as two other title matches, Zoe continues to stand out in the ring. With her turning heel in November 2022, this will be a great chance for Stark to take her character to new heights. Throw in an appearance at the 2023 Royal Rumble, and it's hard not to think she's caught the eye of Triple H and the creative team. Number 116, Gallus. Another faction that I'm lumping together, just because they've been together since basically their debuts in 2018 on NXT UK. Joe and Mark Coffey, as well as Wolfgang, dominated in NXT UK, but since moving to plain old NXT, the group has struggled a bit to establish themselves. However, they've picked up a bit of success lately, with some wins on TV and becoming no more contenders for the tag titles. Maybe they'll continue finding their footing with a bit more time, and let's hope so, since all three men are solid brawlers. Number 115, Veer Mahan. It took over six months for Veer to finally return to Raw after much, much hype, but it wouldn't be long until he disappeared again. Despite an impressive win streak, it's clear creative didn't have much for Veer. Now that he's in NXT, hopefully WWE can get Veer back on track and give him an actual character that fans can get behind. Veer Mahan has a really interesting life story, but the company has never tapped into it. But for right now, some more training and experience will go a long way for Veer. Number 114, JD McDonough. After being exiled, from NXT UK following a loss to Ilya Dragunov, McDonough jumped over to the black and gold brand and has been involved in some big matches. He squared up with Dragunov again and the NXT champion, Braun Breaker, while also wrestling both men in an entertaining triple threat match. In addition to that, JD McDonough has been doing some fine work on the microphone as he continues to establish himself in NXT. Number 113, Andre Chase. One of the most entertaining wrestlers in NXT right now is Andre Chase. He has some great comedic ability, a hilarious foul mouth, and his Chase U segments have been fun to watch. He's easily the best member of Chase U, and someone I hope we see on the main roster sooner rather than later. Number 112, Axiom. Axiom has been involved in some tremendous matches this year, such as the epic best of three series against Nathan Frazier, in which the masked wrestler emerged victorious. He's definitely over with the fans, and his exciting high-flying moveset makes his matches a highlight of any show. WWE has been struggling to find the next big masked wrestler, and Axiom might be it, but only time will tell. Number 111, Dexter Loomis. Loomis has been one of the many rehab hires Triple H has made since taking over the reins. Returning in August 2022, Dexter's bizarre behavior keeps you wondering what he's going to do next. His creepy persona has been mostly used for laughs so far, but perhaps Loomis could also be a more serious heel character in the future. The reason I'm not ranking Dexter Loomis that high is that he doesn't seem to be connecting with the crowd right now. Maybe his character will evolve, but at the moment, it's not as strong as it could be. Number 110, Scripps. The man formerly known as Reggie has proven to be an athletic and entertaining performer. He was a solid 24-7 champion, but outside of that, Reggie didn't do much and was mainly used as an enhancement talent. However, the man is still talented, both as a character and athlete, so he's been given another opportunity. He's been repackaged as a master wrestler scripts and has been picking up some wins on the NXT brand, but it's still too early to tell if it's going to work out or not. Number 109, Alba Fire. Formerly known as Kylie Ray, it seemed like Alba Fire got lost in the shuffle for a little while. Thankfully, that appears to be over, after she was back in the mix again with a rivalry with former NXT Women's Champion Mandy Rose. After coming up short in that feud, Alba has taken on a bit of new character, joining the side of Isla Dawn. This could be an interesting pairing. Alba has gallons of talent at her disposal, and unlike others we've talked about, she doesn't need any time to hone her skills. Whenever WWE is ready to pull the trigger, Fire is ready to go.
Number 108, Ivy Nile. WWE is clearly high on Nile, as she's been presented very strongly. She's an incredible athlete and was the first female champion on NBC's Titan Games. In a lot of ways, Ivy Nile is the complete package, with both impressive skills in the ring and on the mic. Ivy might not be 100% ready for the main event, but she's showing signs that she can get there, and it looks like WWE agrees. Number 107, Jager Reed and Rip Fowler. The grizzled young veterans were one of NXT's premier tag teams. This left fans scratching their heads after Jager Reed and Rip Fowler for repackage as the Dyad. They are now part of the Schism faction, which now has Ava Rain, which means the entire group could get called up to the main roster together. Still, in this new role, it remains to be seen whether Reed and Fowler can recapture their past glories. Number 106, Nathan Frazier. Frazier put in some big performances in 2022. As mentioned earlier, his best of three series versus Axiom was fantastic, as was Frazier showing in the awesome five-way North American title ladder match at Halloween Havoc. WWE fought AEW to get Frazier on their roster, and it was worth it. The man has proven that he's eager to repay the faith the company has in him and could be a potential major star in WWE. Number 105, Noam Dar. The Scottish Supernova hasn't been seen since NXT UK's closure in August 2022. His final appearance there saw him win the NXT UK Heritage Cup, defeating Joe Coffey. Still, Dar's had a solid 2022, and as we saw in his run on Raw and 205 Live, he's an experienced and gifted individual, both wrestling-wise and on the mic. Hopefully we'll see him back soon, either on NXT or the main roster. Number 104, Wes Lee. Wes Lee had a roller coaster of a year, to say the least. In April 2022, he and Nash Carter won the NXT Tag Team titles, but after Carter was fired, the tag titles had to be vacated, forcing Wes Lee to then carve out a singles career for himself. Lee hasn't looked back since losing his tag partner, as he reached the pinnacle of his singles career by winning the North American Championship at Halloween Havoc. The former Impact Wrestling star already has years of experience behind him, and seems like he'd be a great addition to the main roster in the near future. Number 103, Nikita Lyons. Lyons burst onto the scene in a big way, with her gaining a lot of attention in her NXT debut in February 2022. Since then, she's been well protected by winning all of her singles matches in NXT. She continued to get better in the ring, and is without a doubt an exciting prospect for the future, but unfortunately, Lyons suffered multiple injuries during her short time in the company, and may have to miss a significant amount of in-ring time in 2023. Number 102, Cora Jade. Cora Jade spent a great deal of 2022 as a lovable babyface, until an even more lovable babyface named Roxanne Perez showed up. This led to Jade turning on Perez in spite of the fact that they were tag champions. Now as a singles wrestler, Jade is really rising as one of the up-and-coming stars of WWE's women's division. Cora is another female wrestler I think we'll be seeing more of sooner rather than later. Number 101, Grayson Waller. It is no secret that Waller is an integral part of NXT since the 2.0 rebranding. He is definitely near the top in terms of mic skills. Hardly a week goes by in which he's not on screen in some capacity. He made a name for himself during his feud with AJ Styles in early 2022 and has kept getting better and better. He closed out the year with a statement by becoming the first winner of the Iron Man Survivor Challenge at Deadline and engaged in a heated feud with Braun Breaker. Grayson Waller is one of many great talents at WWE's disposal. Number 100, Sonya Deville. Since transitioning away from her role as an authority figure, Deville has been on the losing end of the majority of her matches. Up until taking a leave of absence in 2020, she had been doing the best work of her career. If she can get back to this level again, there's no doubt Deville will rank much higher in the future. The only question is whether WWE will give her that opportunity or not. Number 99, Aaliyah. While her transition to the main roster started in 2021, 2022 is when Aaliyah's career really took off. She went from being a smaller name on NXT to having several bright moments on SmackDown, such as when she broke the record for fastest WWE win. On top of that, she briefly held the women's tag team titles with Raquel Rodriguez. Aaliyah's underdog persona is one that has potential to connect with fans and will hopefully set her up for success if WWE wants to push her towards the SmackDown or Raw women's titles. But things may not be looking all that good for her in WWE, as she hasn't been on TV since September, even though she's healthy. Hopefully it's not too long before we see Aaliyah back in the ring though. Number 98, Shotzi. Shotzi's unique look and presentation helped her shine greatly in NXT. Unfortunately, she hasn't had much luck on the main roster just yet. It seems like WWE didn't have a clear plan for her, and she hasn't really won any big matches. In fact, her biggest moment so far was losing to Ronda Rousey at Survivor Series. But more recently, Shotzi has been allowed to use her tank during her entrance again. It's a small change, but I think little things like that will help Shotzi connect with more fans and rejuvenate her career. Number 97, Drew Gulak. Gulak is a great in-ring technician, while also proving to be an entertaining character on screen, as seen by his PowerPoint presentations. However, Drew wasn't featured in the best spot on TV in 2022, having lost all his matches while making limited appearances. There's no denial in Drew's talent though, and he's been shown to be very reliable when called upon, which is why the company has given him a new home in NXT. Gulak just needs a chance to shine, much like his case during his memorable run with Daniel 
Daniel Bryan in 2020. Number 96, Jinder Mahal. Ever since losing the WWE Championship in 2017, Jinder has fallen further and further down the card, having suffered a lawn injury layoff along the way. Although 2022 wasn't his year, Mahal certainly has more to offer than his current role in WWE suggests. This is likely why the company gave him a fresh start back in NXT. Time will tell if this run helps him get back on track or not. I think there's definitely a spot for Jinder, it just hasn't been found yet. Number 95, Zelina Vega. Zelina ended 2021 strong by becoming Queen of the Ring and capturing the tag team titles with Carmella. She had a much less impactful 2022, however, having lost nearly all her matches. An injury suffered after WrestleMania 38 only made matters worse. Vega eventually made her return as the manager for Legado del Fantasma. This is definitely a better fit for her. Zelina is arguably one of the best female speakers in WWE history, and I think putting her back in the manager role will help her get her career back on track. Number 94, Dijak. The former T-Bar, Dijak hasn't been able to bounce back after the disaster that was Retribution. He has, however, been consistently good in the ring. This is why WWE has given him another chance on the black and gold brand, where he had the most success in the company. Dijak's been picking up some wins and feuding over the North American title, and due to his in-ring talent and size, he's likely to be called back up to the main roster before long. Hopefully when that happens, things will pan out better for him. Number 93, Rick Boogs. Boogs' natural charisma helped him make a big impact right away on SmackDown. His entertaining initial run was sadly cut short by the torn quad he suffered at WrestleMania 38, causing him to miss the rest of the year. This is the reason he ranks so low, but now he's healed up and back in WWE, we could see him climb higher on this list in the coming year, if given the right opportunity. Number 92, Mako Satomura. Mako Satomura carried the NXT UK Women's Division as one of the brand's standout performers. She's also impressed wider audiences in a handful of appearances she's made on NXT. Unfortunately, since NXT UK's closure, Mako hasn't done much, only appearing a couple of times on the black and gold brand. I'm hoping it's just a timing thing and that WB is waiting for the right moment to bring her back. Let's hope that's the case. Number 91, Caden Carter and Katana Chance. Caden Carter and Katana Chance have been a tag team for a while, but 2022 is when they are able to find the most success, having captured the NXT Women's Tag Team titles and having the longest run of any team so far. Carter and Chance have the potential to be a really good team as they both continue to improve together. It's definitely best that they stay as a team for the foreseeable future. Number 90, Gigi Dolan and JC Jane. Yeah, I know Toxic Attraction is no more, but since Dolan and Jane have just broken up, it's too early to say which woman is better, so I'm breaking them together for right now. Gigi Dolan and JC Jane were quite the impressive tag team. They had some real chemistry together and are easily in the discussion of all-time great female tag teams. Like I alluded to, we'll have to see how Gigi and JC's singles careers go, but even if it's a flop, their run as a tag team will be impossible to forget. Number 89, The Creed Brothers. From one tag team to another, we have The Creed Brothers. Brutus and Julius may be one of the most standout teams that have emerged in a while. Their unique style is incredibly fun to watch, and it's no surprise they've won the tag team titles this year. The Creed Brothers are exciting to watch, and I feel like they're only going to get better as they continue to evolve. Number 88, Pretty Deadly. Speaking of The Creed Brothers, the tag team that beat them for the NXT Tag Team Championship was Pretty Deadly, Elton Prince and Kit Wilson. They've established themselves as a fun and charismatic tag team, as well as one of the most serious duos on the roster. Prince and Wilson won the NXT and the NXT UK Tag Team Championship unification match, cementing Pretty Deadly as one of the premier tag teams in WWE, and after feuding with the New Day, it could be a sign they're almost ready to be called up to the main roster. 2023 could end up being a pretty great year for them. Number 87, Tyler Bate. Joining WWE at the age of 19, it's pretty crazy that Tyler Bate is a longtime veteran at the age of 25. After NXT UK's closure, Tyler Bate moved over to the original NXT. He had some really great matches against Braun Breaker and JD McDonough. However, it remains to be seen where he'll land as a regular member of the show. But due to his in-ring talent, as he's shown for a number of years now, Tyler Bate is more than worthy of his place on the NXT roster. Number 86, Roderick Strong. 2022 was not a great year for Roderick Strong. He's been on the end of a number of losses and has been out since August with an injury. The man is incredibly talented, but it seems like WWE is having a hard time finding the right place for him. There's also the fact that Roderick Strong has requested his release from WWE multiple times, probably so he could join his wife and friends in AEW, so that isn't a good sign for his future either. It's a shame, because Roderick Strong is an amazing wrestler, but his WWE career has been rather lackluster as of late. Number 85, Ilya Dragunov. Ilya Dragunov's NXT UK title run was something special. Lasting over 300 days before having to drop the title due to an injury, he was especially great in the build-up to the NXT Triple Threat match at Halloween Havoc. Unfortunately, Dragunov fell short in that match, but continues to impress. It'll be very interesting to see what happens next for Ilya, whether it be on NXT or maybe even the main roster, to mix it back up with his old rival, Gunther. Number 84, Nikki Cross. 
Nikki has proven to be a versatile performer, having played two very different characters already in WWE. She went all in on the Nikki A.S.H. persona and was able to make it work, but it's clear she has her best work as Nikki Cross. It's still too early to tell if reverting back to her original persona will be a success, but throwing away the 24-7 title is a great way to start, even if she missed the trash can. Number 83, Bobby Roode. Man, what happened to this guy? Roode had so much promise when he was in TNA, and the company seemed to more or less realize that. Then, when Bobby Roode debuted in WWE, he was off to a really hot start, and it all just fizzled out. His Dirty Dogs tag team with Ziggler was alright, but it seems like the glorious one has been criminally underutilized. Unfortunately, Roode got injured in 2022 and has been out of action for a while. That's never a good thing, but maybe this will work out for the better. It feels like it's been a few years since we've seen Roode at his best, and the time off will hopefully give him a chance to return fresh and rejuvenate it. Number 82, Los Lotharios. Despite being featured in some entertaining segments, it's fair to say that Los Lotharios has been lost in the shuffle. They've largely been used to put over other teams, having barely notched up any wins themselves. Both Humberto and Angel are talented wrestlers with good comedic timing, and they've only gotten better the more they're featured on screen. There's still time for things to be turned around, so we'll see what 2023 brings for Los Lotharios. Number 81, Dewdrop, or Piper Niven. Dewdrop began 2022 challenging for the Raw Women's Championship and then competing in the Elimination Chamber. Sadly though, she has left off WrestleMania and then spent some time off TV. Later, Dewdrop formed a tag team with Nikki A.S.H., although they had little success. Dewdrop was a standout performer in NXT UK, and her size and power also gave her a unique edge on the main roster. Now that she's back as Piper Niven, it's possible she'll get a better opportunity in the women's division, but we've only gotten to see glimpses of her best work so far. Number 80, Shelton Benjamin. Shelton had little success since the Hurt Business disbanded, but he still remains one of the company's most experienced and dependable wrestlers. The gold standard has arguably been one of the most underutilized wrestlers in WWE history, and even today, Benjamin still has much more to offer. Plus, he's barely aged over the past decade, despite being 47 years old. Still, as good as he is, at this point in Shelton's career, it's hard to imagine WWE will suddenly move him into a prominent role. Number 79, Cedric Alexander. Cedric has been one of WWE's most underrated wrestlers for a while now, but like with Shelton, Cedric hasn't done much since the Hurt Business split up. It's fair to say that Alexander has struggled to find his voice since debuting, and this is likely what's held him back from being more heavily pushed. Even with a change in leadership backstage, WWE hasn't done much with Cedric. The man is still pretty young, and there's always the possibility of the Hurt Business getting back together, so let's hope WWE has plans for Alexander in the near future. Number 78, Ridge Holland. Holland has fit well on SmackDown as part of the brawling broods with Sheamus and Butch. The former rugby player continues to improve, and perhaps it won't be long until he and the Celtic Warrior eventually wrestle each other. With Sheamus potentially joining with Drew McIntyre full-time, things could get heated soon, and just imagine how hard-hitting a match that could be. Number 77, Indy Hartwell. Despite losing her true love, Dexter Loomis, twice, Indy remains one of the bright sparks of NXT. She may even be a Dark Horse candidate to win the NXT Women's Championship. Her time in NXT has been good, but it'll be interesting to see how she does on the main roster when that time comes. And it might not be that far off, as Indy is one of three women on the NXT brand to be even a shot in the 2023 Royal Rumble. Number 76, Roxanne Perez. Roxanne Perez seems like someone we'll be hearing a lot more about in the coming months and years. Despite being so young, Roxanne is wrestling far beyond her years. She rose to the occasion in 2022 by winning the breakout tournament while also putting in a strong performance against Mako Satomura, Cora Jade, Rhea Ripley, and Mandy Rose. WWE seems to see so much in Perez that, like Andy Hartwell, they gave her a shot in the 2023 Royal Rumble. With so much talent at such a young age, it's possible she'll someday become a champ on Raw or SmackDown. No matter what, it'll be exciting to see what Perez does in 2023. Number 75, Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes had a very eventful 2022. He won the North American title at NXT Stand Deliver, holding it for two months and then entering an NXT feud with Braun Breaker. Additionally, Grimes has been sought after by the D'Angelo family and Schism, as both have attempted to get him to join their respective groups. I really like his richest man in NXT gimmick, and it's only a matter of time before Grimes gets called up to the main roster. Number 74, Omos. For the most part, Omos had a dominant 2022. The Colossus Colossus has been wrestling long and still has room to improve, but he has the look, and in WWE, his kind of size can go a long way, but he does seem to have taken a bit of a back seat to Braun Strowman for the company's favorite monster. On top of that, Omos had another forgettable Royal Rumble entry, so that's not exactly a great sign, but still, should Omos's in-ring skills improve, then he could definitely be an even greater force to be reckoned with in WWE. Number 73, Hit Row. Top Dalla, Ashante Theodonis, and B-Fab have insane 
charisma that made them a joy to watch in NXT. It was disappointing to see them let go in 2021, but it's great that they're back on SmackDown. Right now, they're one of WWE's most exciting prospects. The longer Hit Row stays together, the better they'll be as a group that already has a lot of potential. Number 72, Minchin Mia Yim. Mia Yim's debut on the main roster in 2020 was bumpy to say the least. Then again, nobody really benefited from being part of Retribution. Like Hit Row, Yim was another promising talent that got let go in 2021. However, she returned in November 2022 as Minchin Mia Yim and now has a chance to show fans what she's capable of. It's still early to tell if this second run will be better than her first, but with Triple H and Creative Control, I think things are looking good for Mia Yim. Number 71, Legato Del Fantasma. I mentioned this group earlier when I talked about their manager, Zelina Vega, and they are fantastic. Santos Escobar, Joaquin Wilde, and Cruz Del Toro were a highlight of NXT for over two years. The group made the jump to the main roster in October 2022, and they're already making waves on SmackDown. Vega has given Legato Del Fantasma an extra dimension, and I'm excited to see what this faction does as their careers develop. Number 70, Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. In NXT, these two were very accomplished as part of Imperium. However, after breaking up in April 2020, the team came back together in September. The two are currently a part of the SmackDown roster, and should they be afforded the same opportunities, then Kaiser and Vinci will no doubt shoot up this list. Regardless, it's been so far so good for two-thirds of Imperium, but I wonder where their leader, Gunther, will rank. Number 69, Mad Cat Moss. Moss had a strong first six months of 2022, winning the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal and defeating Happy Corbin on a number of occasions. The second half of the year, though, is sort of a different story. It wasn't nearly as eventful with the change in leadership behind the scenes, and it doesn't seem like he'll be featured as much anytime soon. It's possible Triple H just isn't as big a fan of Bad Cap as Vince McMahon was, but I could be wrong. Either way, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Moss. Number 68, Mustafa Ali. Ali is another one of WWE's most underutilized talents. He has a unique story that the company hasn't been able to capitalize on yet. He did have some bigger moments towards the end of 2022, like his US telematch with Austin Theory and his brief rivalry with Seth Rollins, but it seems he almost always ends up on the losing side of a match. It's likely that publicly asking for his release didn't do him any favors. But like I said, there's a lot with Ali, and we can only hope that WWE sees it. Number 67, Candice LeRae. After over a year off, the Poison Pixie finally returned to WWE in September 2022. She officially joined the company in 2018 and spent almost her entire career in NXT, which isn't a bad thing. Her run in the black and gold brand was top notch, and it's exciting to see what she does on the main roster. And with victories over Bayley and Dakota Kai and a Royal Rumble appearance so far, she's not off to a bad start. Number 66, Carl Anderson. Most of Carl Anderson's success as a singles wrestler has been outside of WWE, but the former leader of the Bullet Club has had a successful tag team career to be proud of. Along with Luke Gallows, Anderson returned to WWE in October of 2022 to help AJ Styles fight off the Judgment Day. The three longtime friends have largely been by each other's side since, along with Minchin joining on occasion. It's still early into Gallows and Anderson's return, but it's not hard to imagine Carl and the OC will capture tag team gold once again. Number 65, Luke Gallows. It's a bit difficult to rate Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson separately since they been linked together for most of their careers in WWE, but if you had to give the nod to one over the other, you'd have to go with Luke Gallows. He's had a couple of things going for him. One is that he's a more versatile character, as we've seen him play a full-on bad guy with the straight society to a more comedic character when he was Festus. Plus, he's much bigger, which can mean a lot in WWE. And Gallows is four years younger than his tag team partner, meaning he probably has a few more years left in the business than Anderson. If the duo ever did go their separate ways, Luke Gallows is likely the one to have the better run. Number 64, The Viking Raiders. It's been a start-stop run for Eric and Ivar. They made their return to SmackDown in the summer of 2022 after spending some time in NXT, but it wouldn't be long until bad luck would strike, with Eric being forced to miss time with a foot injury, thus putting the team in limbo. The Raiders have always been a strong duo, and I love that they have colorful characters. I'm hopeful they can get things back on track now that they've returned and have Sarah Valhalla Logan by their side. Number 63, R-Truth. Over the past few years, Truth has really become a legend in his own right. The man has been in WWE since 2008 and even had a brief run back in 2000 to 2002. Few wrestlers in the company's history can match his longevity. Truth established himself as one of the funniest wrestlers of all time and is pretty much able to make anything work. Case in point, the 24-7 title. While the belt overstayed its welcome, I think it would have been much worse if R-Truth wasn't a part of it. He made the 24-7 championship his own and while he wasn't as involved with it in 2022, that belt will forever be his. It's a shame that 2022 ended with R-True suffering an injury, but that doesn't stop him from being one of the funniest wrestlers on the WWE roster. Number 62, Elias. 
Elias was given a fresh coat of paint following WrestleMania 38 as he took on the role of Ezekiel, Elias' clean-shaven brother. This resulted in some hilarious moments with Kevin Owens. Following his rivalry with KO, Ezekiel was then written off and Elias was brought back. Ezekiel's run was brief, but he made a big enough impact to hopefully leave room for a return at some point down the line. But unfortunately for Elias, it looks like the creative team isn't quite as invested in his character and he just isn't as popular as he was a few years ago or as loved by fans as his brother was. Number 61, Otis. It still seems weird to say it, but Otis once held the Money in the Bank briefcase. It may end up being the highlight of his WWE career, but that doesn't mean he still isn't a solid member of the roster. Currently teaming with Chad Gable in the Alpha Academy, Otis is a powerhouse in the ring who has been relied on more for his comedy work than being a true dominant force. He's good for his size and has some charisma, so you can imagine he'll have a role on Raw or SmackDown for years to come. But at this point, it seems unlikely he'll have the opportunity to become a top star anytime soon. Number 60, Carmelo Hayes. Similar to a guy like Sheamus, Carmelo Hayes has been delivering banner after banner in the ring. Hayes has established himself as one of the greatest NXT North American champions in history, and you just need to watch his match against Ricochet at Worlds Collide for proof. While his title reign may be over, Carmelo Hayes proved he was truly the A champion in NXT. Number 59, Dominic Mysterio. 2022 was a big year for Dominic. For starters, he competed in a big match at WrestleMania 38. Later in the year, he had become a villain, betraying his father and joining the Judgment Day. Perhaps he and Rey still had more they could have done as a team, but there is no denying it's been fun to see a new side of Dom, especially with Rhea Ripley in his corner and his recent time in prison. Just like it took a heel turn for Eddie Guerrero to truly find his groove in WWE, perhaps the same may be true for Dominic. Number 58, Lacey Evans. WWE tried something different with hyping the return of Lacey Evans. She told her real life story with the aim of getting her over as a hero. This did not end up happening, with Evans becoming a villain and then bashing the fans for not cheering for her. This was a shame as Lacey had the potential to be a solid fan favorite. It was just the execution that was a bit lacking. After being off TV for a couple of months, she's back on SmackDown. Hopefully WWE figures out what they're finally going to do with Lacey Evans because these back and forth switches with her character have not done her any favors. Number 57, Carmella. Carmella had an eventful 2022 outside of the ring, having gotten married to Corey Graves, while the two were also featured in their own reality show. This hasn't carried over to in-ring success, however. Despite challenging for the Raw Women's title on a few occasions in 2022, the Princess of Staten Island scored just one pinfall the entire year and was out of action for months with an injury. She's recently returned and can maybe turn things around, but 2022 just wasn't Mella's year. Number 56, Raquel Rodriguez. Raquel has already made history by becoming the first Woman to hold the NXT and WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. She has also made a bright star on SmackDown, putting in an impressive display against Ronda Rousey. Raquel's size and power helped her greatly in NXT, winning multiple championships and competing in some top quality matches, and that's carried over to the main roster. She closed out 2022 with a huge match on SmackDown against Rousey, and she kicked off 2023 with a Rumble appearance. Raquel's unique look makes her a standout on the roster, but she's also been putting in the work at the same time. She will absolutely be one to watch in 2023. Number 55, Book. Much. Butch arrived on the main roster in 2022 by joining Sheamus and Rich Holland as a member of the Brawling Brutes. The name and character change threw off fans who knew Butch in NXT, and I'm not a huge fan of it myself. Despite that, the man once known as the Bruiserweight has settled in well on SmackDown. If the right opportunity comes, I hope WWE drops the Butch name and he goes back to being known as Pete Dunne. I know it's just a name, but would Steve Austin have been as big a star if his name was just Rick? Number 54, Apollo Crews. Crews's 2022 was pretty uneventful until he made the jump to NXT in the summer. Since then, Apollo has been repackaged and featured in some interesting promo videos. This is definitely a step up from what Cruz was doing before. His new character has potential, and the move to NXT has freshened things up for the former Intercontinental Champion. If he continues putting in impressive performances, it won't be long before he gets called back up to the main roster. Number 53, Chad Gable. At one point, it seemed like Chad Gable might have been the next Kurt Angle. He's funny, great in the rank, and has a legitimate wrestling background. But under Vince McMahon's creative, the undersized wrestler was mainly used to make his opponents look good, while usually taking the loss. However, he's been getting more TV time and opportunities to develop his character over the past year, and it seems to be working. In the Alpha Academy, Gable has been entertaining and could potentially enjoy success as a singles wrestler when he and Otis go their separate ways. Chad is unlikely to be a top star in WWE, but he's absolutely one of the most dependable in-ring performers. Number 52, Shayna Baszler. The Queen of Spades didn't have too much to sink her teeth into in 2022. Despite that, Baszler is always a credible competitor given her MMA background 
background and the fact that she's the longest reigning NXT Women's Champion when you combine both of her title reigns. The best part of Shayna's recent run has been her aligning with Ronda Rousey. These two would make an awesome tag team given they are both part of the four horsewomen of MMA. An eventual match between Shayna and Ronda has the potential to be really big and I have a feeling that's what's going to happen in the near future. Number 51, Baron Corbin. Corbin's character has been a ton of fun to watch. Him getting broke and then gambling and becoming rich and happy was a fun storyline to see unfold. This continued into 2022 with some solid rivalries with Drew McIntyre and Madcap Moss. More recently, he's joined JBL as now being called the modern day wrestling god. Unfortunately, the pairing isn't going so hot as Baron ends up losing most of his matches. You can't polish a turd. I tried. But still, I feel like Corbin is sort of that bad guy you can basically have feud with anyone and it'll work. Now what does that mean for Corbin's future? We'll have to see, but even without any major victories, he's easily one of the best villains on the WWE roster right now. Number 50, Natalia. Sure, Natalia has remained in the same position on the roster for a while, but within that time, she's continued to be one of WWE's most consistent and reliable performers. She's had exceptional longevity while pretty much never getting injured, though she did miss part of 2022 with a broken nose. However, Natalia hasn't had too many championship opportunities in recent years, having not held either of the women's titles since 2017. But as Natty has seen herself in 2023, sometimes all it can take is one win to be in the championship picture. Number 49, Gable Steveson. He's yet to wrestle in a WWE Ring, but Gable Stevenson may still end up becoming the next big thing in wrestling. If nothing else, it looks like the company is sure gonna try. After all, not many wrestlers can make their official debut by being presented by Stephanie McMahon at WrestleMania. And the following night at WrestleMania Night 2, Gable Stevenson received a big moment when he manhandled Chad Gable and stood side by side with Randy Orton. However, there have been rumors Stevenson's training hasn't been going so great, so maybe this ranking is way too high. Or, if WWE gives him some big opportunities, it may end up being too low. We'll likely find Find out soon. Number 48, LA Knight. Knight had a strong 2021 in NXT. In 2022, he got sent to the main roster where he became part of the Maximum Male Models and was renamed Max Dupree. Unfortunately, his time on SmackDown was much less eventful compared to NXT. As previously mentioned, Maximum Male Models just wasn't working and LA Knight was getting dragged down with it. Thankfully, after Triple H took over creative control, Dupree reverted back to LA Knight. Things are looking promising so far, as he's received more TV time, been in a feud with Bray Wyatt, and and took part in a major segment with The Undertaker. All of this leaves me hopeful about Knight's future. Number 47, Io Sky and Dakota Kai. Io and Dakota made a big splash when they showed up at SummerSlam alongside Bayley, forming the group Damage Control. It's been a solid faction, with Sky and Kai winning the Women's Tag Team Championship not long after being paired together, and then winning them a second time shortly after that. The Damage Control storyline is going well so far, and both Io Sky and Dakota Kai are solid wrestlers, so I don't got much to complain about. Number 46, Dolph Ziggler. I feel like WWE had the chance to make the show off a big star nine years ago, and they've waited too long to pull the trigger. I don't think he's ever going to have the fan support he had between 2011 and 2013, but this most recent run hasn't been all bad for Dolph Ziggler. Him going to NXT and winning the championship in early 2022 was a nice curveball and actually worked out quite well. Dolph's definitely got the in-ring skill and personality to be a top-tier star, and I feel like WWE sort of found the right spot with Ziggler in NXT. Maybe they can recreate that success again on the main roster. Number 45, Johnny Gargano. Johnny Wrestling returns to the squared circle in 2022 and looks set to finally get his big break on the main roster. It's still early, but given how legendary of a run Gargano had in NXT, expectations for him are especially high. The timing worked great as Triple H was in control of WWE. Had it been the old regime, they probably wouldn't think much of the Wednesday night. While Johnny's storyline with The Miz and Dexter Loomis doesn't seem to have quite connect with the crowd, Gargano is so talented that it may only be a matter of time before he's back in a featured role. Number 44, Solo Sokoa. Sokoa recently made the jump to the main roster off the back of a strong run in NXT. Having him join the bloodline immediately gave him credibility and got him in the spotlight. The former North American champion would likely benefit, however, from adding an extra move or two to his arsenal in order to separate his in-ring style from his brothers, the Usos. Still, Solo Sokoa has accomplished a lot in just one year in WWE. He's a featured performer in the top storyline in WWE right now, and it seems like the best is yet to come. Number 43, The Miz. The Miz truly is awesome, in the sense that WWE has 
found the perfect role for him. Like I mentioned with Corbin, Miz is that bad guy that basically can feud with anyone and it pretty much always works. His character and personality have been fine tuned and despite losing rivalries to people like Edge and Logan Paul, I don't think the Miz's credibility has been hurt. Sure, I don't think the A-lister will ever be the biggest villain in WWE like he was in 2011, but he honestly doesn't need to. The Miz has cemented his legacy and at this point, everything else he does is just icing on the cake. Number 42, Ricochet. I'm so happy to say that Ricochet has fared better lately than he has in the past couple of years, having held the Intercontinental Championship for two months during the spring of 2022. I really hope that WWE continues to step it up with him though. There's things that Ricochet can do that no one on the roster is capable of. However, he won't be able to do them forever. WWE really needs to capitalize on this guy while they still can. Sure, Ricochet isn't going to be WWE Champion and his mic skills aren't all there, but there's definitely a spot for him and if WWE doesn't have one, they need to make one and fast. Number 41, Shinsuke Nakamura. 2022 was a mixed bag for the King of Strong Style. He started off the year losing the Intercontinental Championship off the back of what was a pretty poor run as champion. However, he rebounded with his pairing with Rick Boogs, which was much more memorable. Boogs' injury suffered at WrestleMania unfortunately put their team on hold, and Nakamura hasn't gotten up to a ton since then. Despite that, Shinsuke is still one of the most talented and gifted people in WWE right now. If they give him the right storyline and opponent, Nakamura could get back to where he was in no time. Number 40, Kerry and Cross. You know Triple H really likes this guy, because Cross is the first person to return after the game took control from Vince McMahon. That's fitting though, given how much McMahon missed the boat with Cross creatively, especially compared to how much better the former NXT Champions presentation is now. Cross's comeback started off well by scoring a big victory over Drew McIntyre at Extreme Rules. Now that the rivalry with Drew is over, we'll have to see what is next for Cross, but I'm not too worried. I mean, it can't be worse than his run in 2021. Right? Number 39, Naomi. Naomi is still listed as part of the WWE roster, so we are including her, but it's anyone's guess if she'll return. However, when she was an active part of WWE, Naomi really did shine when given the opportunity. She improved a ton during her last run in the company and looked and felt like a star. While she may not be the absolute best in the women's roster, Naomi was and is a top performer. Number 38, Tommaso Ciampa. Ciampa was called up to Monday Night Raw in April 2022 and without much direction. He did, however, score a big pinfall victory over AJ Styles which led to an excellent match for Bobby Lashley for the United States title. Tommaso briefly teamed up with The Miz before disappearing in August 2022 due to an injury. Ciampa is another guy who has an optimistic future ahead of them thanks to him being a Triple H guy, so it'll be interesting to see what happens when he returns. Number 37, Austin Theory. The first and second halves of 2022 were night and day for Austin Theory. He began the year as a fan favorite of Vince McMahon and competed in a featured match at WrestleMania. After that, Theory became the United States Champion and won the Money in the Bank ladder match. Then, after Vince McMahon left and Triple H took over, Theory barely won a match and failed to cash in. However, he did win back the United States title, so it's hard to tell where Theory's career is headed. Number 36, Liv Morgan. Liv had a good start to 2022, challenging for the Raw Women's Championship earlier on and lasting nearly 40 minutes in the Royal Rumble match. Unfortunately, she had a bump when she racked up losses in a short space of time. But things began to pick up after WrestleMania and led to Morgan building up some momentum, capturing the Money in the Bank contract and then the SmackDown Women's title in the same night. For a while, Liv was on fire, establishing herself as a key player on the roster, but she dropped her title in under 100 days to Ronda Rousey. Since then, Liv Morgan's character has been a little aimless, but she did have a great showing at the 2023 Royal Rumble. It's possible she'll get another opportunity and climb back up the list in no time. Number 35, Braun Strowman. The monster of all monsters seen roll his way back to the WWE in the fall of 2022. Braun hasn't missed a beat and looks to be in the best shape of his career. It's so far so good for Strowman, so we can probably be expect him to move further and further up this list as he makes more of an impact. I just hope we get to see him do some crazy stuff, like flipping cars or destroying an entire structure, like the good old days. Number 34, Alexa Bliss. Bliss started Tales in 22, looking to shake off her previous character and association with The Fiend. It seemed like the right move for her at the time, as her supernatural character was getting a bit stale. But with the return of Bray Wyatt, it looks like WWE is going back to putting her by his side. Time will tell if the two have a better run this time around, but it's also possible that their pairing has run its course. Either way, Bliss is very popular with the fans, solid in the mic, and likely to remain one of the top stars in the women's division. Number 33, Bailey. Bailey returned in a big way at SummerSlam as the leader of Damage Control. It was one of the first big moves of Triple H's takeover of creative. Like I mentioned with Dakota Kai and Io Sky, the group is going well, and that's in large part thanks to Bailey. While a year-long absence sucks, it does make everything seem fresh, which has in turn made Bailey's comeback really enjoyable to watch. And considering the group is feuding with Becky Lynch, it's likely Bailey will be in a top role for some time to come. Number 32, The Street Profits. The Street Profits have made a name for themselves as one of the most entertaining and hardworking tag teams there is. Montez 
Ford and Angelo Dawkins always put in a shift when they have a match, and their chemistry and charisma is off the charts. Not to mention, the connection they have with the fans is something special. Ford probably has the stronger potential if the group ever goes their separate ways, but hopefully that's not for some time to come, as the two are still very entertained together. Number 31, Damian Priest. Priest had a terrific first year on the main roster in 2021. 2022 didn't start off as strong, however, as he lost the United States title in February to Finn Balor. Things picked back up, though, at WrestleMania 38 when he aligned himself with Edge and later Rhea Ripley, as together they formed the Judgment Day. The group kicked it into high gear once they betrayed Edge and added Finn Balor and Dominic Mysterio, to the point where the group is now a highlight of Raw each week. 2023 could be Priest's best year yet, with the Judgment Day often featured in some of the biggest matches and storylines on the show. Number 30, Xavier Woods. Woods achieved one of his major career goals by becoming King of the Reign in 2021. Xavier went all in on the King character too, but a leg injury halted his momentum. Woods thankfully made a full recovery and continues to be as entertaining as ever, along with Kofi Kingston. Even though the past year or so has been somewhat quiet for the new day, Woods is still incredibly talented and doesn't need to rely on his in-ring skills to be entertaining. Number 29, Kofi Kingston. Speaking of the new day, in 2021, Kofi was back in the WWE title picture for the first time since losing the champion in 2019. Since then, Kingston has remained a tag team wrestler with The New Day, who are always some of WWE's most consistent performers. They remain popular even years after being together, and have recently shown up in NXT to win tag team gold and help out the next generation of wrestlers. While I'm not getting my hopes up that Kingston will get another world title reign, I think Kofi fits perfectly in the role he has. Number 28, Finn Balor. In 2022, Balor became a bad guy, which gave his character a much needed facelift. With the rest of Judgment Day by his side, Finn picked up one of the biggest wins of his career over Edge at Extreme Rules. While Balor was US Champion for the first part of 2022, that was pretty forgettable, especially compared to what he's doing now. With Triple H heading up creative and the game reportedly a big fan of his, Balor could have an even bigger 2023 and possibly move back up into the main event scene. Number 27, Matt Riddle. For the most part, Riddle had one heck of a 2022, as he was one of the most fun wrestlers to watch each week. His tag team with Randy Orton was great in 2021, and that carried over into the following year. Of course, RK Bro came to an abrupt stop when Randy Orton sadly got injured. That was a big blow, but the original bro has flourished on his own by having superb matches and still being one of the most entertaining wrestlers on the mic. Unfortunately, Riddle ended 2022 on a downer as he reportedly failed a couple of drug tests during the year. Hopefully he's able to pick things back up when he's able to return to the ring. Number 26, Sheamus. Despite winning the WWE Championship the same year he debuted, the past couple of years have been among the Celtic Warriors' best. For starters, becoming the leader of his own faction has helped him stay fresh, while in terms of matches, he He's had Boehner after Boehner. Sheamus himself has stated how much Butch and Holland have rejuvenated his passion for wrestling, and his pairing with Drew McIntyre should also keep him in a prime spot on SmackDown. This passion has definitely been showing, given how high of a level Sheamus has been competing at lately. Number 25, Asuka. Asuka made a long way to return in the spring of 2022. However, the Empress of Tomorrow hasn't made that big of an impact since then. It's sad because she's capable of way better as we've seen in the past. Asuka also remains one of WWE's most talented in-ring workers, and while she isn't someone that can give long, captivating speeches on the mic, that doesn't take away from her awesome presentation and infectious charisma. Here's hoping that her most recent return gets her back on track and in line as a top contender for the women's title. Number 24, Rey Mysterio. For Mysterio, 2020 will be best remembered for being the year that he got teamed up with his son, Dominic, on the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania. But that year will also be remembered for Dominic turning on his father. 2022 marked 20 years since Ray's WWE debut, and just like in 2002, Mysterio remains one of the company's most exciting and colorful wrestlers in 2023. Despite being mostly used to put over younger talent, Ray is still incredibly popular and continues to turn back the clock. It's like this guy doesn't get older. Number 23, Logan Paul. Alright, so this one might be a little controversial, but hear me out. Paul has not competed in many matches in his career, but you have to admit, he's taken to wrestling incredibly quickly. The YouTube star is a natural on the microphone, while his athletic background has helped him excel in the ring, and he's only gonna get better the more he wrestles. He's done so well for himself that he even main evented a pay-per-view with Ron Reigns and actually looked really good in the ring. It also seems like he's destined for a big match at WrestleMania 39. Every match Logan is in gets attention, and if his brother Jake Paul gets involved, we could see something really special happen. Number 22, Braun Breaker. Braun has enjoyed a meteoric rise since debuting in NXT. Even though he hasn't been wrestling for that long, he has picked things up instantly and has gotten really good really quickly. This led to him becoming NXT champion relatively fast. His powerhouse style is reminiscent of his father and uncle, and just like the Steiner brothers, Braun executes his moves with crisp precision, making his matches insanely fun to watch. Breaker has defeated everyone that's been put in front of him in NXT, and it seems like only a matter of time until he makes the move to Raw or SmackDown. Number 20 
2021, Bray Wyatt. One of the most anticipated returns of 2022 was Bray Wyatt's. After much hype, the Eater of Worlds came back at Extreme Rules. Previously, it had been a tough couple of years for Bray, but this latest comeback has fans more excited than ever to see him in WWE again. Wyatt has a new lease on life, not just from a creative perspective, but from the fans' perspective as well, which is a far cry from the last time we saw Wyatt at WrestleMania 37. He's still loved by fans, and the creative team seems really invested in his storyline with Uncle Howdy and Alexa Bliss. Wyatt will likely remain one of those prominent and popular characters in WWE, and can move up up even higher on this list in no time. Number 20, Big E. Big E's run as WWE Champion was a little underwhelming, and things unfortunately got worse for E after he lost the title. The bad luck continued when he suffered a serious neck injury in March 2022. Since it's been such a tough time for Big E, it would be unfair to rank him any higher. However, he's one of WWE's most beloved wrestlers, and we're all hoping to see him back in the ring as he has unfinished business, especially when it comes to the world title. Number 19, Gunther. Since debuting on SmackDown in April 2022, Gunther has been on an absolute tear. The Reign General has yet to lose a one-on-one -on -one match since joining the main roster, and has been one of the better Intercontinental Champions in recent years, having brought a lot more prestige back to the title. That's really impressive. Gunther regularly has great matches, and this together with his hard-hitting style has made him one of the best wrestlers to watch in WWE. With his record-breaking rumble showing, it's pretty clear that Triple H has big things in mind for the Austrian wrestler. Gunther winning a world title seems like it could happen down the road. Number 18, Rhea Ripley. After wrestling in temporary tag teams, first with Nikki A.S.H. and then Liv Morgan, Ripley finally got something to sink her teeth into after joining Judgment Day. Rhea has fit into the group really well, and although she missed a few months of ring time due to injury, Ripley still has maintained a great presence on screen. Her work with Dominic Mysterio has been a particular highlight too, and to top it off, she put in an incredible showing at the 2023 Royal Rumble, dominating the match and walking out with the victory. It's hard to imagine that she won't be carrying the Raw Women's title soon. Number 17, Ronda Rousey. Rousey. Ronda made her long-awaited return to WWE by winning the Royal Rumble in 2022. Talk about making a comeback. Sure, she had a loss at WrestleMania to Charlotte, but that was followed by a victory at WrestleMania Backlash. After becoming SmackDown Women's Champion, the baddest woman on the planet then became embroiled in a really good feud with Liv Morgan, and even though Ronda lost the title once again to Charlotte, she's still one of the most recognizable female athletes on the planet. Overall, this latest run for Ronda Rousey hasn't been as strong as her first, especially in terms of match quality and promos, but it would have been hard to top that. Now that she's working with Shayna Baszler, I'm really pumped for where it's going to lead. Number 16, The Usos. Jimmy and Jay have enjoyed a dominant spell since they returned as a team in 2021. They first won the SmackDown Tag Team titles, and then, in 2022, they captured the Raw Tag Belts as well. The Bloodline are currently ruling WWE, with The Usos being right at the forefront. This is potentially the best run of their careers thus far, and they show no signs of slowing down. The Usos continue to compete at a high level, wrestling quality matches, and have become the longest reigning WWE Tag Team Champions of all time. We'll see if WWE splits them up in the Bloodline storyline, but either way, Jimmy and Jay look to be heavily featured on the show for some time to come. Number 15, Sami Zayn. We all remember how incredible of a run Sami Zayn had in NXT. He seemed destined to be a good guy for all of his WWE career. However, a start and stop run on the main roster resulted in him becoming a bad guy. This ended up working out well, as Zayn really came into his own on the mic. In 2022, he joined up to the Bloodline as Honorary Oos, and this has arguably been the best storyline of Sami's career. He's been hilarious, and has constantly been making the other Bloodline members break character. And after that incredible moment at the Royal Rumble, Zayn looks to be positioned as one of the top stars in WWE. Number 14, Kevin Owens. Owens bringing Stone Cold Steve Austin out of retirement to wrestle a match at WrestleMania 38 will probably go down as KO's greatest moment. As mentioned earlier, Owens' stuff with Ezekiel was pretty good as well. Kevin Owens also has to be due for another title reign at some point, especially since he hasn't held a championship in WWE since 2017. And getting heavily involved with the Bloodline storyline means he's likely to remain in a top role for some time to come. Overall, Kevin Owens is one of the best on the roster, so I don't see much reason why WWE to be wouldn't give him another run with the gold. Number 13, Seth Rollins. Rollins has been one of the highlights of Raw since being drafted to the brand in 2021. His views with Edge, Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, and Riddle have all been very memorable. Seth has consistently been one of WWE's standout in-ring performers, always giving the fans their money's worth and keeping his character fresh, while also being a tremendous villain. He can fit well into nearly any spot on the show and always delivers in the ring, which means you have to consider him in the upper tier of WWE wrestlers. Number 12, Edge. 
Imagine telling someone in 2013 that 10 years later, Edge would not only be wrestling again, but he'd still be one of the best stars on the WWE roster. It would sound crazy, but it is true. A lot happened with the Radar Superstar in 2022. He became a villain, changed his music, started Judgment Day, cut his hair, got betrayed by his own group, turned back to the side of good, and then reverted back to his old music. All the while, the Ultimate Opportunist had built up an impressive year-long undefeated streak until his loss to Finn Balor at Extreme Rules. As Edge now enters the final year of his career, we're all hoping he can go out with a bang and possibly even recapture World Championship one last time. Number 11, AJ Styles. 2022 was a quiet year for the Phenomenal One, as he largely flew under the radar, especially during the second half of the year. But despite taking a back seat, Styles remains one of WWE's top stars. Therefore, it'd be unfair to rank him any lower, given how good we all know he is when he's at his best. Considering that he's 45 and can still perform better than some people half his age, AJ easily earns number 11. Hopefully it's only a matter of time before we see Styles at the top of the card again. Number 10, Bobby Lashley. Lashley has been a major force in WWE for a few years now, having cemented himself as a true main event star with his victory over Brock Lesnar at the 2022 Royal Rumble. Lashley continued to fire on all cylinders, holding the United States Championship, where his title defenses were one of the highlights of Raw each week in 2022. Now he's feuding with Brock again, and it's likely to lead to a WrestleMania showdown, which means WWE considers the Almighty to be one of their biggest and most marketable stars. Number 9, Charlotte Flair. The Queen began 2022 as SmackDown Women's Champion and successfully defended the title at WrestleMania, giving Ronda Rousey her first singles loss in WWE. But Charlotte was absent for most of 2022 after losing the championship to Rousey at WrestleMania Backlash. Charlotte then took time off and got married to AEW wrestler Andrade El Idolo and was dealing with some rough dental issues. However, she ended 2022 on a high note by getting some revenge and defeating Rousey once again to get her title back. Still, despite being more inactive than active over the past year, Flair is easily not just one of the best female wrestlers on the roster, but one of the best wrestlers altogether. Number 8, Randy Orton. The fact that Orton has been a mainstay in WWE since the debut in 2002 is astounding. In fact, no one in the history of Raw has wrestled as many matches as him. What's even more amazing is that the Viper has done some of his best work in the past couple of years. This made it all the more devastating when he suffered a back injury in May 2022. Even over half a year later, it's unclear how long he'll be out of action or how severe the injury is. However, what is for sure is that when the Apex Predator is around, he's on the top of the food chain and there's very few wrestlers who can outperform him. Number 7, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre competed in one of the biggest matches of 2022 at Clash at the Castle, but he was unable to capture the Universal Championship from Roman Reigns. Ever since, McIntyre has still been positioned as one of the top stars in WWE, but not quite at the level he was before. Over the years, he's developed a strong connection with the fans, and he's still really good in the ring, so it might be only a matter of time before he's brought right back to the main event scene. But after 2020 and 2021 being such big years for him, McIntyre has definitely fallen a bit in WWE. Number 6, John Cena. Yes, Cena is still on the roster, which means he makes the list. He's been a part-timer for a few years now and was only able to wrestle a single match in 2022. But still, when Cena shows up, it is a big event. Even if he's been a bit divisive throughout his career, he's still one of the most popular wrestlers to ever compete in a WWE ring. Very few wrestlers have ever connected with the crowd like him. Throw in his look, mic skills, and crossover celebrity, and he's one of the most famous wrestlers in WWE's history. And if he was free to wrestle more, you can imagine he'd be put into major storylines with top stars. So as long as Cena is part of the WWE roster, he's gonna be ranked near the top. Number 5, Bianca Belair. The EST of WWE once again dominated the women's division throughout 2022, and currently, she's enjoying the second longest run anyone has ever had with the Raw Women's title. She's been putting on great matches with a variety of opponents and shown to be one of the most consistent wrestlers in the company. Belair's combination of incredible strength, speed, and agility makes her very skilled in the ring. Add in her unique look and stellar charisma, and Bianca Belair is the total package. Number 4, Becky Lynch. When Triple H took over for creative, one of his first big orders of business was to move Becky Lynch back to the side of good, and that definitely seems like the right call. As good as Becky was at getting the crowd to boo her, she's naturally likable, has been one of the most consistently entertaining wrestlers on the roster over the past few years. She spent nearly four months on the sidelines with an injury in 2022, but she's been picking things up right where she left off. Even though the women's division keeps getting more talent all the time, Becky is still sitting at the top of the mountain in 2023. Number 3, Cody Rhodes. It's still a little crazy that Cody is on this list. Considering a year ago, nobody thought he would ever be back in WWE. Rhodes' return will go down as one of the great WrestleMania moments, and he hasn't missed a beat since. His comeback was sadly derailed for months by that gruesome injury, but now he's back to being one of the top stars in the company after his return. Also, you can't overlook his incredible performance while wrestling with a torn pack against Seth Rollins inside Hell in a Cell. Cody has made it clear that his mission is to win the WWE Championship, and he may just do that after his epic Royal Rumble win. Number 2, Brock 
Lesnar. 2022 was a unique year for Lesnar. He won the WWE Championship twice, but also suffered more losses in single matches that year than he has in a previous year since his return in 2012. However, we have seen a different side to Lesnar since his 2021 comeback with his former Brock persona. This has helped Lesnar stay fresh, while also being incredibly entertaining. Brock had Heyman by his side for so long, it's been refreshing to see Lesnar on his own and being even more true to his real life self. The beast dominance in the ring speaks for itself, and it's this, as well as how fun his character has been, that gets him the number two spot. And number one, Roman Reigns. There was no real question who was going to top the list. Roman has reigned over WWE for a while now, especially since his return in 2020, where he won the Universal title on his first night back and hasn't lost it, having held the belt now for over two years. He then became a dual champion by defeating Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 38 to win the WWE Championship. With all that, it's not surprising that Reigns has been doing the best work of his career. While Roman's skills in the ring have always been good, it's his work on the mic that has really been taken to the next level and made him into a megastar. Eventually, Roman will lose his titles, but for right now, Reigns is staying tall on top of the entire WWE roster. Speaking of Roman, WWE accidentally caught something in his entrance that fans weren't supposed to see. To find out what it was, watch this video. 